Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Zach Miller Dog from Emperor's Comedy. That's Mariah Carey. And uh, I just had a great time blazing up and chopping it up with uh, Mike at Dro TV. Make sure you peep the episode. Welcome back to My First Time, the show where our guests get to tell their story of the first time they got high on marijuana. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, Zach Miller. What's happening? Party people. Good to meet all the nationwide, international, and Floridian consumers of the Dro.TV series. I'm happy to be here, Mike. Straight from Chino, California, brother. Excellent. Well, we appreciate you giving Dro TV some time today. You can find more of Zach anywhere on a social media at Zach Miller Dog D A W G. So links will be down below. Go check them out. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So Zach, um, please tell our audience. First time I got high. All right. Yeah. First so let's, time let's I get into smoked it. weed. I was in seventh grade. My parents had left me home for the weekend with my 10th grade sister okay and uh shout out big rach and uh she threw a party and me and my friend stayed like we didn't get kicked out for it we were there it okay. was pretty awesome and uh we to keep us from being annoying we were we were given a joint to share between the three of us nice and we and we smoked it uh in my bedroom because my sister had smoked out the whole fucking house thinking that she could just get rid of the smell 10 hours before my parents got home which didn't happen um and uh i don't know how high i got because honestly i was i think i we split a 42 so like i was probably a little bit cross-faded so it was hard to call that my first time getting high on marijuana like i smoked some weed but i don't know if i really got the effect that you would characterize as being high. Yeah. The first time that yeah. happened was with an unnamed friend of my older sister's. We smoked some weed behind some garages across the street from my house. Cause that was like, there was no, you know, we figured out, I, I grew up in the city. We figured out all types of ways to drink and smoke weed where nobody would get you in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, we went behind some garages, like, over by these apartments and smoked a bowl, and I had so much fucking fun. Like, I laughed, I, you know, giggled, we, we it was euphoric, and uh, then we ate, it was, you know, the best, the classic stoner experience, awesome. which is the best stoner experience. Soon after that, I started having panic attacks from weed. Okay. But I, I didn't know were panic attacks. We used to just call it bugging out. But every time I'd smoke weed, I'd like freak the fuck out and it would be a problem. And uh, I didn't find out. So, so I kind of quit smoking weed and just drank. Uh, uh -huh. And I found out years later in therapy that they were panic attacks and they were related to trauma I was suppressing with my parents not my parents splitting up not the weed itself right okay but i drank for another i was like 22 then and i drank for another 13 years i was about 35 when i started smoking weed again and i was like oh i don't have any anxiety or panic issues this is what weed's supposed to feel like you okay. know what i mean right. and then i started really enjoying it and using it regularly and then quit drinking because who's got time to be cross-rated? Not this guy. Uh, <clears throat> so I've been, you know, medicated ever since. About eight, about eight years straight. Took two days off once, but we luckily the 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 fact that it doesn't get out of your system is not a bad thing. It's a it's a it's another compliment to the plant's ability and versatility and awesomeness. <laughs> Yeah, hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a regular cannabis user? All day, every. I shouldn't say all day, every day, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do a show like this. But yeah, every sure day. You would every day. I've, I've hosted fifteen hundred shows. Super stoned, bro. 
Fucking Steve Jobs fucking invented the iPad and fucking ran that whole program high. JFK was a fucking pot smoker, bro. You could be a high functioning pothead for sure, for sure. Oh, listen, I've done it all stone, but when <laughs> I smoke and I try and talk and like conduct an interview, mm. uh, it just doesn't go as well. So uh, that's okay. You know why though? It takes practice too, my G. For sure. You might, sure. you might get better. Like the more you like, smoke weed and like train yourself to, to do those activities while in the headspace of being baked, you'll get better at it. You know, you just get better at adjusting with the time. You slow down and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this that's is episode okay. 199. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Who stuff. you got for, who you got for 200? It's a it's a special guest. I'll tell you afterwards, okay? Good. I, I I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. I don't want to let wait. the cat the cat out of the bag the day before no. the 200th no. episode airs, but it's gonna be pretty awesome. It's gonna be pretty awesome. I'm excited for you, Mike, dude. It's really really exciting you doing what you're doing out of Orlando. So keep it up, my G. No, I appreciate it. And I appreciate comedians, especially somebody like yourself, not just because you're you're in the weed game, but I feel like comedians <laughs> are like the last bastion of free speech that we have out there where we can make jokes, talk about things that maybe are a little bit uncomfortable, but say it in a way where it's real. And the right. reason you laugh is because you know that, well, yeah, there's some truth to it. So, uh that's why I, I love talking to comedians. And and uh, how long have you been doing comedy, Zach? Um, I've been in the stand-up game, as it were, since 2003. Wow. So okay. it'll be 20 years this July. I've nice. been on stage 15 of those years. I took some years off early in my career where I was just producing and helping manage other people's careers. But since about 2010... I've been, well, since 2010, I've just been on a tear. I've hosted about 4,000 shows since 2010. Awesome. So, like, I've stayed busy. And most of them weren't, I didn't start doing, Hemper's Comedy didn't exist until 2020. So, like, I did, a, you know, a lot of just non-weed shows or whatever um, is most of it. But I was smoking weed the whole time I was hosting those shows, you know what I mean, yeah. since 2015. So <clears throat> I was training myself to perform stone. Now I've been training myself to perform for stoned people, <laughs> yeah. which is different. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? It's one thing being high, telling jokes to a bunch of people drinking. It's a whole different thing being high or not high, performing stand-up to a bunch of people who are fucking dabbing out like you know smoking big can like people are really hot right, right like so you have to perform for them differently they laugh differently they respond at a, at a different pace yeah so, that's one of the that's one of the questions i had for you listening to a lot of comedians talk about the their audience that they perform for and a lot of mm -hmm. them's uh, they're not weed guys but a lot of the ones i hear talk about oh man it's tough performing in front of a weed crowd uh i'm not sure that's the same for you but it's it's not your drinking crowd that maybe laughs at everything because they're drunk but uh, do stoners laugh at everything because it's easier when you're stoned no it's different so like drunk crowds once you just get them into the rhythm you could just trigger them for laughs right versus weed crowds you, you know Drunk crowds, you hit over the head with a bat. Like weed crowds, you have to entice to come to you. It's just a, it's it, it's a, it's a different it's it's a different pace. Right. And and people who say it's hard to do stand up for weed crowds, I don't know if it's hard. It's just different. And if you're and if you're not that good of a comic who understands how to adapt themselves to that type of space, then you're gonna not like it. You know, if you want just a dodo head crowd that you can just, you know, <clears throat> coax into getting easy laughs from, not all weed crowds are like that because 
we you know how it is when you're stoned it's like obviously there there's a delay you know what i'm saying it's it's kind of like they're watching there's a disassociation a tad bit which can be a good thing and a bad thing so like weed crowds are way quieter than drunk crowds which is a good thing you know what i'm saying they don't laugh as easily but they're also quieter more which allows for less distraction to what you're saying people mm. talk chattering in the background these junk people having conversations that fucks up the show sure like what's good what's what's really great for stand-up is when it's quiet and then it spikes to a laugh if it's already like people are talking and then you get some laughs and then you're hearing people talking it's like it's a way less dramatic experience. And I like to create dramatic experiences, right? Mm. At the, and I think most good comics do, right? So sure. with, with, with weed crowds, you can, you can still get them all to laugh at the same time. Uh, it's just, they're going to be quieter when they're quiet. And yeah. I think it's a good thing. It's just a different pace, but I'm not, a, I'm not in a hurry. So, but also I play normal club drunk crowds all the time too. So I, you know, I get, I get to experience both, but, I, but I think comics are going to get more used to performing for stoned crowds because that's, that's what's going to be happening as there's more legal consumption. So mm -hmm. there could be more stand up shows powered by weed, which is what Hemper's comedy is. You know right. what I mean? <clears throat> it's normalizing the consumption of the plant right yeah those are going to be you know comedy clubs exist in places with liquor consumption licenses uh traditionally now they're going to exist in places with cannabis consumption licenses so that you can monetize the experience by selling your product mm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i mean that that just is what it is the prop the problem is is <clears throat> not the problem, but there's just not enough <clears throat> cons legal consumption spaces yet. There's a lot of, in California, there's a lot of private consumption spaces, but the public ones are still like trickling out. You know what I mean? Right. So we're getting there, bro. We're getting there. Or you do outdoors. There's more opportunities outdoor, but then you can get, which is a good bet in Southern California, but it's not 100%. We had a show rained out on Friday out here. Mm. so you know yeah it's just part of the industry growing and being part of a industry that's federally illegal <laughs> but but legal in the states it's it's a weird time bro it's a weird hey. fucking time <laughs> hey. but i think it's coming to an end i think the de the federal decrim it might even be imminent we'll yeah it might be. yeah zach uh which is worth 30 on. states Hmm. This is an Endos free roll. Uh, e N D O S brand on Instagram. They make really nice, just straight up flower joints, which is what I like to smoke. Like I'll smoke an infused joint too, but on the regular, I, I just like fucking big cannons of good flower. That's it. No, no keef, no uh, whatever it's called, hash, no uh wax just flour just nice indoor flour ground up and put in a joint that's it nice that's so. that's that's my joint too is just a uh, roll up a joint sit back smoke a fatty yeah dude yeah i'll, I'll roll them up too but uh i love free rolls i'm a big fan of the fucking pre-roll dude you know what i saw just ready on, to go light it your, up on your page i i saw earlier uh putting my notes together for this episode i just smoked yesterday the first time out of a power hitter uh oh nice yeah, it was awesome great and yeah and they're like the og hampers comedy sponsor shout out motherfucking power hitter bro yeah Hold shout on. outs to power hitter it was it was awesome i didn't realize how how simple it was when it was explained to me i thought it was going to be one of these fancy contraptions with you know all kinds of mechanical arms and stuff but there you go look at that well fucking do a power hit right now out of fucking <laughs> celebration that you're now power hitting hey i love it love it that's what's up so go ahead yeah dude it's, it's the shit see look i'm taking it I'll put my joint and <clears throat> normally if you were sharing this you won't 
want to use a joint that you're all lift on. But right. since I'm just doing this with myself, it's not a big deal. Normally, you'd want to take a fresh J and then torch it so you don't put your lips on it before you share it. Because the whole point is not to share germs. Yeah. Player, player. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Good living, dude. Yeah. Good that's... living. Yeah. Uh, oh. One of our one of our good friends down here goes by Stoner Bro Flex, and the owner of Power Hitter sent him one because this guy Flex is amazing. He lost two hundred pounds and went through a whole transformation. Uh, attributes a lot of it to cannabis. And when he was putting his story out there, the owner of Power Hitter hit him up and said, I'm going through a weight transformation. Let me send you one of these power hitters. And so uh that's how that's how yeah, I the big came. the big homie, the big homie John. Yeah. He had a heart attack, bro. And fucking now he's like super buff. Nice. And I'm really proud of John. He lost a ton of weight. He looks fucking great. Yeah, cannabis and fitness are like definitely homies, just like cannabis and comedy. Like I'm in weight. I I lost so much weight when I started smoking pot because it got me off booze. I right. cut forty pounds in like two months just because I quit drinking because and I was only smoking pot. And people talk about the munchies because they're ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Like if you are a regular cannabis user, you eat less, not more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you do eat, it tastes better and you can eat, you know what I'm saying? But like, you're not like uncontrollably hungry. You're not like a new vampire where if you see a bag of chips, you have to inhale them. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't eat till like I need, I eat because I need to, not because I want to. Like eating kills your peak, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Which is also a good hack for stoners like, you know, if you smoke a lot of weed, if you're ever too high, just eat something, man. Get your, get your blood sugar straight and it'll lower your peak. You know what I mean? My um, problem is, at least my problem is I, I smoke at night and then it, it does make me hungry. And that's when my girl gets home from work and that's when we eat. But I'll, yeah, and then you I'll, eat, but I'll, I'll intermittent fast most of the day. I might not eat yeah. until after noontime. I'll have like a good, good sized lunch, decent lunch, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. But then for dinner, it's man, I'll just I it's smoke and then really enjoy that fucking dinner, man. That one <laughs> meal of the day. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's like that's ends up great. ends up being about two meals, but you know. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. right. You gotta eat, man. You gotta yeah. eat. Are you do you stay active? Oh yeah. I mean, I I I got a pull-up bar out back. I do, you know, calisthenics, yeah. all that good stuff. So I'm I'm active. I'm fit, but I I I overconsume late at night sometimes because I am stoned and it maybe it is a little bit of the munchies, but it's like we sit oh, down. I feel you. We sit yeah, down yeah, yeah. at the couch to watch TV and I'm always like, I'd rather watch, I'd rather sit at the table and eat like normal human beings. I think we would eat less, but she's worked all day. She works like 12 hour days. So when she gets home, she's like, I just want to sit on the couch, watch TV. So okay, whatever, whatever you want to do. But all right. <laughs> whatever you want to do that's right <laughs> happy wife happy life my dude hey everybody i want to quickly mention food forest abundance food forest abundance is a great way to create your own self-sustaining food forest and naturally occurring ecosystem that's commonly found in nature but designed specifically for you through multiple layers of trees shrubs herbs vines rhizomes mushrooms and perennial vegetables you can become your own supply chain without the typical maintenance required of a garden from small spaces to large areas, both urban and suburban, Food Forest Abundance wants us to get back to our roots in nature by engaging with our food production in a meaningful way. For more information, click on the link in the description below and start your journey today. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. Man, I had a Domino's job like a year and a half ago. And uh, yeah. as soon as I started working there, I mean, it was like free pizza every day. So I said, man, I got to get my I got to get uh... my ass back into a gym routine. So I, I was working out five days a week. And from the time I started, I only worked there about six months from the time I started from the time I left, I lost eight pounds. And I was in some of the best shape of my life because that was the only way I would could eat pizza at eight, 10 o'clock at night and not, you know, be a thousand. Yeah, and when you're, when you're, and when you got a working class job and 
in uh, modern America, you better take that free food. <laughs> yeah, Fucking groceries are goddamn expensive, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you what? Do you still have, what? What do you do for a living now? Um, I'm I've always kind of been self-employed. I was trying to buy a Domino's franchise, and you had to work there for a year as a manager. Um, oh, you're like, dude, I'm not just some Domino's level talent, cousin. I was trying to figure out if I could get a franchise. <laughs> well, I I mean, you know, I, my bad, bro. My hey, bad. what's what's funny I don't is people who work at Domino's, you can work at Domino's and have a fucking cool weed show. That ain't bothering me. No, no, listen, <laughs> listen. Uh, what's funny is my manager is now my producer. He he was uh, just graduated from Full Sail, did audio and video. So yeah. I was like, you know what, dude? Let's let's leave Domino's and uh, and let's go start a friggin' weed podcast. So that's that's what Fucking we do. Awesome, bro. Yeah. yeah, people need opportunities. I used to work at Buffalo Wild Wings, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody's had a job. Hell yeah. I haven't had I haven't had another job in some time, but you know I'm paying for it. Not having a job is expensive. <laughs> Comedy's not always that lucrative, my guy. <laughs> and I got two kids. So, so what made thank, you thank what God made you want to start uh, Hemperer's comedy? Um, being a cannabis user and seeing the benefits of of how that helped my life versus being an alcohol user. Okay. And wanting to see more stages powered by cannabis versus powered by alcohol and chicken wings or whatever. You know what I mean? So I think cannabis and soon psilocybin and mushrooms are going to be fantastic stewards of the art form. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we shouldn't have stages that serve alcohol. Sure. I'm just saying we need more stages powered by cannabis and soon to be mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. Maybe both at the same time, depending yeah. on what states, but depending what states are up for. Right. I'd rather have a crowd that's doing cannabis and mushrooms than cannabis and alcohol, or m mushrooms and alcohol. That's never going to happen. You're never going to mix mm -hmm. any of it with alcohol, but you might mix weed and mushrooms as far as legal consumption in this state. I'm sure. hoping. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Awesome. But the big thing is to be able to smoke weed in the showroom. Right. That's that's what like being able to consume cannabis while you watch the show and artists can consume it on stage. To, to normalize it like alcohol is normalized in the space. That's it, homie. All we want is what they got. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So and it's me too. Again, I play shows with alcohol all the time. I'm not against it i I hope people use it uh responsibly and i think at, from homie to homies i'd be like dude less booze more pot but that doesn't mean you have to never drink alcohol you right. know what i'm saying people have been drinking alcohol for thousands of years just like they've been smoking weed for thousands of years mm -hmm. you know what i mean i'd rather you fuck with alcohol responsibly weed liberally I mean, that's, that's how I do it. I barely drink, but I'll have a cocktail here and there. I'm a grown up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not going to be a problem until, you know, I get fucked up with my father-in-law on Christmas and wake up puking because you can't, <laughs> you can't say no to your father-in-law. You just got to man up and get drunk, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking I mean. deal with your annual fucking hangover, bro. What are you going to say? No to that dude? <laughs> Sorry, bro. You're my father-in-law. Hey. Respect. <laughs> like santa it just happens once a year you know yeah 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 oh man last year we polished a body a bottle of johnny walker whatever label some like expensive ass bottle of scotch and uh man it went down smooth but it came up rough boy i puked in front of my kids out front of my house and they're like old enough to know yep dad drank too much like oh. <laughs> well that's all right you know what i mean like I don't, I don't drink around my kids almost at all. I, I do. They do see me use cannabis pretty regularly, and that, and they see that it doesn't do anything. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Right. It's the side effects of my medicine, guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's people running around all over the place, hopped up on fucking Vicodins and Oxycontins, bro. Yeah. And fucking that's a problem. The fact that I'm 
you know, you call it stoned, I call it the side effects of my medicine. You know what I'm saying? Just like if, if somebody didn't have the tolerance per se for painkillers, like if I took one Viking and homie, floored, I'm out for hours. Don't know what happened. It's, I, I remember when I got my fucking wisdom teeth pulled, like two days, gone, right? Yeah. And there's people who could pop Vicodins all fucking day. You wouldn't even know it. You know right. what I mean? And same thing for cannabis. If, if, if you, you know, adapted to the side effects of your medicine, it's not really a thing. It's not a problem. Unless like you're going to judge me because my eyes look a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Oh, can you see? Yeah, I can see, dude. Can you relax? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, stop it. <laughs> it's just people brainwashed by, by generations of misinformation and propaganda, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, you can't even be mad at them for it. You just got to yeah. show them the way. And like, keep leading by example, showing that cannabis is positive and a, and a, a solid alternative to a lot of things that are way more damaging, way more. Mm. So in states with legal cannabis, heroin use is, is down on average 20%. Hey, hey it's not 100%, but 20 is a nice start. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of- Not going in the other direction. Body. Well- a lot of less dead bodies. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of dead homies from in, in the extent, basic extension of heroin addictions. I, I don't know if it was fentanyl that actually killed them, right, but right. it wouldn't have happened if they didn't have a heroin addiction. And sure. the heroin addiction came from their pill addiction. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's not going to happen with cannabis. Right. And for a lot of people, if they could start with edibles and whatever type of, of <clears throat> cannabis products they need for what's going on and that works they'll never make it to pills so they'll never make it to heroin mm. like, you know what I mean saying weed is a gateway drug is it's just dumb it's just dumb and I'm right. and, I, and people just need to understand that it's dumb and it'll take time it's gonna take time but and it's gonna take people old people going away and new people coming up it's you know, it's going to take time. You know what I mean? But it's, it's coming. It's coming. You can't, you can't really stop it at this point. 30 states. Come yeah, on, dude. No. What are we doing here? The, the trend, <laughs> the trend is our friend. That's for sure. Well, and, that... it, and it's New York and California. And if you know anything about this country and our cultural shift, look at cigarettes. When fuck California banned smoking inside, then New York did it. Then pretty much the whole fucking country. Yeah, yeah. Except for, I don't know, could you still smoke cigarettes at Denny's in fucking Alabama or whatever? Like, what about know. Florida? Florida's Not a pretty Florida. big cigarette state. Y'all are pretty wild. Y'all are like West Virginia, kind of. But can you yeah, smoke cigarettes in a lot of places? In, uh, yeah, for sure. No. Uh, can you smoke cigarettes uh, a lot of places in Florida still? No, not that I, not that I, I don't think so. I mean, exactly. we, go out, we go out somewhat regularly. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Dude, uh, that's just been got... played out nationwide for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what's going to happen with weed. It's just, period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Dude, weed's uh, easier than cigarettes. Zach, it's been uh, awesome chopping it up with you. I appreciate you coming on the show today, my friend. Uh, hilarious. I love this conversation. Let everybody know the best place they can find more of you in Hemperor's Comedy. Oh, at Hemperor'sComedy.com or Zach Miller Dog dot com z-a-c-h-m-i-l-l-e-r-d-a-w-g um or on social media at those two same places at emperor's comedy at zach miller dog you really let me talk man i hope i hope i didn't like disinclude you from your own show too much i could talk bro you're you're my guest you're my guest the point is i just feel like we're ask questions and you didn't answer them so it's all good dude it's all good dude, you're you're doing a great thing here mike i'm really happy for you bro and uh excited for your 200th episode i appreciate you having me on them it's been great thank you if you like content like this make sure you go down and smash the like button and subscribe to drove tv because otherwise you'd miss awesome guests like zach and interviews smash that like button dude smash it Smash the fucking like button. You heard what the man said. So, Zach, 
Appreciate it, my friend. Thank you for everybody tuned in. And as always, smoke them if you got them. Yeah, yeah. Back. What's up, Drew TV family? You can now stream the audio version of all these episodes on your favorite podcast player. And if you like more episodes like this, check out this playlist we put together over here for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't want to miss more great content from Drew TV. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, smoke them if you got them.